Okay, The Art of Living Long. I'm here in a gym in Europe. Thought I'd talk about this famous book from the late 1400s, 1500s by Luigi Carano on The Art of Living Long. And now we live in a world that's like diet cults, right? You have like vegans versus carnivores, keto, you know, Mediterranean diet, macrobiotic, blah, blah, blah. This man lived 102 years old and he influenced many famous people with this little booklet. And it's interesting because back then they had crazy things. Like if you had health issues, they would let blood, you know, bloodletting, leeches, everything. And he kind of, in this book, you should, you, I think it's free on iBooks. He says uh, when he was in his 70s, he had this horrible accident where basically a horse and buggy flipped. He was dragged and the doctor said, basically, you'll be dead. And they wanted to do all this old school, like I said, bloodletting humors and all this stuff. And he said, no, just let me do my diet and I'll be fine. And sure enough, he miraculously, no drugs, no antibiotics, no nothing. He comes to life and he lives 202 years old. So what was his formula? The crazy thing is this dude was ahead of his time in terms of science, because what is science found in, let's say lab rats, there's all these scientific studies, not eating a lot. So now you hear buzzwords, intermittent fasting, you hear things about restricted caloric diets. Well, this guy was ahead of his time. And this is, I'm gonna read you his exact. He said, Here, here's principle number one to live in a long life. Always leaving the table, well able to take more. In this act, according to the proverb, not to satiate oneself with food is the science of health. There, that's it. Now he had some other stuff that I'll share, but basically what's interesting is in Okinawa, which currently is the country that has the most centenarians, people living a hundred. They say the same thing. They call it like eating to 80% full. It's exactly what he said in the 14, 1500s. Leave full. Now, if you look at modern bodybuilders when they're not bulking, what's one of the things they say? Like lots of meals. Um, Tom Platts, if you know, he's like a legendary Hall of Fame, quote unquote, bodybuilder, biggest thighs ever. I did a little mentorship with him just kind of on Zoom for 12 weeks or eight weeks. And one of the things he said was, eat more, but smaller meals. Don't get full because it pushes the belly out. Now he was talking about more from the aesthetic side. So if that's your thing for health, for aesthetic reasons, um, eating like the Japanese said, or Luigi said, never to satiation never to that feeling. And you know, in America, I'm in Europe right now, they already know this. There's almost no obesity. You go to Sweden, Denmark, you know, um, Finland, Norway, nobody's big. I mean, there's people who are stockier, curvier and all that. In fact, Swedish people, Swedish women are pretty curvy, but wherever you go to a restaurant, there ain't no all you can eat. <laughs> there's nothing like that. I was in Paris. You know, portion size is like this big. I was with my friend, Zach, and he had a liver pate. He had never had it. He's like, oh, I wanna try this liver pate. And he, a little bit comes out. He's like, I'm from Texas. I'm gonna eat this. He's eating, he's eating. Come on, bro, chill. This is Paris. There's a lot, like, people don't eat that much. He ate like two or three, order, kept ordering it. Guess what happened? He had Montezuma's revenge. And he had been live. he had been in Europe for a while, and I think his body got accustomed to this smaller portion size. So you look at a lot of the modern world, literally cut portion size, like Luigi said, not to satiate oneself with food is the science of health. Now there's counter arguments to the whole caloric, you know, caloric restriction. Right now I'm doing caloric restriction. I'm cutting down. I've cut like 30 pounds. Went from bulking stage when I'm doing like power lifting. Now I'm pretty lean. You lose muscle. So this caloric in intake thing, I see people that overdo it, entrepreneurs, and they're like, oh, you know, mice that don't eat as much food, the sign shows, or Luigi or the Okinawans say, never don't eat that much calories. The problem there, especially if your goal is muscle, it's tough to build muscle on massive caloric restriction. So kind of a hybrid concept that I've learned, I've been building out in the last six years, I've spent a million bucks on my million dollar body protocol hiring the best experts in the world, Ben Greenfield, like I said, Tom Platts, I've talked to the who's who of fitness and diet and built this protocol. It's basically for a busy entrepreneur, how can you be in shape? So one of the principles there, intermittent fasting is a pretty powerful one, Grego Gallagher, Kino Body. You know, now the thing about intermittent fasting is a little bit different than Luigi was saying, because what he was saying is every single meal, just eat less. And uh, Thomas Edison was influenced 
by this Luigi guy. So Thomas Edison, towards the end of his life, he was only drinking milk, okay? <laughs> and he, he had gotten himself down to a teeny amount of calories. And it, it, it was not amazing. He was not robust in health. So I think that the caloric restriction thing is complex. It depends on if you're trying to bulk, trying to get, if you get want to get powerful, if you want to be able to lift weight, you got to eat. But on the flip side, doesn't mean you have to eat so many meals per meal. I, I, you know, so many calories per meal. So breaking it up. Now, you know, I trained some with Becca Swanson. She's in the Guinness Book World Records, strongest woman in history, bench 601, deadlift, I think 770, squat, like same thing, 750 or something. She said she used to just eat one meal a day, but that's that power lifter look. Most people don't want that power lifter look. And their goal is not to, you know, do 770 <laughs> on a deadlift or squat, male or female. So the art of living long, I think, is temperance per meal. And again, you can throw in the intermittent fasting and there's different ones. You can do 16, eight, you know, 16 hours with no food, eight. I, I think some of the science depends on what you're looking. There's some hype to it. Some bodies respond better to intermittent fasting. Some people age. You know, I, I'm not sure you need to be doing intermittent fasting at 16 years old. Sounds insane because you have mass, your metabolism peaked. If you're a dude, you got maximum testosterone hitting from 16 to say 22. So I think this simple, what the Japanese say, eating to 80% full or what the art of living long, he says, never satiate yourself. That's number one. He had a couple other things that he said are secrets to his living to 102. And remember, this is pretty impressive. Like 14, late 1400s, early 1500s, this is a time of tremendous trouble. I mean, you just finished up what's called the Hundred Years War. You had various plagues, bubonic plague, which in some places wiped out 50% of the population. So living to 102 back then, was quite a feat <laughs> compared to what it is now. So here were some other principles he said. He says, I've also been careful to guard against great heat and cold. So number one, he didn't like the fluctuation of weather. I mean, this again, you got people like Wim Hof that are espousing going in super cold water, ice baths. There's certainly cold thermogenesis has a lot of science to it. So I think once again, I think, but there is plenty of examples in history. I think it was Alexander. So you had Alexander, the Russian czars, the end of the Romanov empire, which ended in World War I, Nicholas and Alexander. I forget which one of the czars, I think it was in the 1800s. It wasn't, you know, the final Romanov family that was killed by the Bolsheviks in a basement, shot to death, you know. It's a crazy tragedy story, but I think it was his father or grandfather. He was a czar. He went out in Russia in the cold weather when he was in his 60s and 70s. Didn't wear a hat. Boom, pneumonia. So it's one of these things. Yes, the whole Wim Hof, you can build up. I do cold thermogenesis, but, but it's different than the extremes of cold, heat and cold, controlling yourself in a cold bath. You're not necessarily getting out and frozen. So, you know, I think that's kind of a common sense one take what you will, but I think this one's more important. Extreme fatigue he avoided, or excesses of any nature. I think that that's not sleeping. You see entrepreneurs are like, yo, hustle and grind. You can sleep when you're dead. I'm going, well, you ain't living 102 to enjoy your wealth if <laughs> you enjoy extreme fatigue. I saw a video of Jeff Bezos, you know, richest man in the world. He's like, I need eight hours. He says as a leader, as a CEO of Amazon, he's like, you get paid to make a handful of very small decisions. And so your brain has to be at the peak. So Luigi back in the 1400s would agree with Jeff Bezos, avoid extreme fatigue. He said, I've never allowed my accustomed sleep and rest to be interfered with. Art of living longer, never allow your accustomed sleep and rest to be messed with. I even travel, like when I'm traveling the world now, I time it. I time it with my gym workouts. I time it, I mean, it's not always possible, but pick your flights. So it doesn't mess up the circadian rhythm. And then the last thing, he's avoided for any length of time, poor ventilation. You know, that's, it's one of those ones. My grandma lived to also 102 and she's from Germany and she lived in California and it was cold. I mean, if you're in Southern California, you'd be surprised how cold it gets. It's a desert at night. My grandma always slept with the window open. She was a big German thing. She's like, ah, ventilation, ventilation, ventilation. So certainly 
there's probably some truth to that. So don't eat more 80% full, don't eat to satiation. So if you're bulking, eat more small meals. If you're cutting, you know, less but small meals. I think that's a key thing. Don't distend the stomach aesthetically. Like I said, some of the top bodybuilders, people like Tom Platts told me that. They're like, you be careful. You get that gut just from the extension over time, pushing your stomach. Avoid extremes of heat, cold, two. Three, don't mess with your sleep. And then four, get ventilation. So I look, it's funny, I'm in this like basement gym here in Europe, doesn't have great ventilation. Although they, they do pretty well in these cold countries. I'm up in Northern Europe. They kind of ventilate well, because they understand this from having to seal everything up. It's so cold outside. So I think it's four simple principles, timeless. Probably science is gonna improve on that as like, you go, you got all this 500 years, 600 years later. Scientists are coming out with the same thing. Some level of caloric restriction. Like I said, there's counter science to insane caloric restriction. I see some people are, are like, I won't mention one. There's famous people like in crypto. They just don't look good. So certainly, you know, under eating is problematic, especially if your goal is to look healthy, vibrant. But so that's why I said that the permutation on this book if you kind of meld it with modern science is okay you can eat you can even do intermittent fasting but keep that principle of don't distending don't distend the stomach don't eat so much at one time you know that's funny old school bodybuilders my dad was pro bodybuilder for a long time it ate a lot of meals you know and he never ate a huge one so it's funny just like you look at america and you're going i wonder if there's one principle in america which is do not go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant and go nuts, you know? And, and the weird thing, if you study like Daniel Lieberman from Harvard, the paleoanthropologist who wrote a famous book called The Story of the Human Body, you know, there's a for sure a reason. You look at your dogs. I have big farms, got a thousand acres, organic farms. I have pigs, all this. I mean, they call them a pig for a reason. They go nuts. But so we have that instinctual kind of DNA to just every meal is your last meal. You got to overcome that primitive, that primitive drive. So you know, most people, it's everybody watching, listening, has, it falls in three categories. You're skinnier than you want to be. You're bigger than you want to be. And a few people are happy with where they are. All three of those, this advice works perfect. If you're skinnier than you want to be, eat more meals, but never more than 80% satiation per meal. If you're big, and you wanna be, you know, leaner, same principle. Don't satiate, eat less meals, don't satiate per. And if you're in between, you know, you're where you wanna be. I, I would avoid the extremes, like Thomas Edison actually didn't listen, listen to Luigi because what did he say? Toward the end of his life, he was like drinking one glass of milk or something extreme, which we now know in modern science, there's no way you're getting your macros and micros through any one meal, any one, whether it's milk or not. Milk's one of those controversial ones. But so he actually didn't listen to Luigi, whose thing was avoid extremes, which is a whole nother conversation we could have about life. But I'll leave it at this. I thought it was a good little reminder and practical. Like right now, I'm gonna start to bulk. I'm gonna cut a little bit more. I'm just gonna eat five, six meals, even seven if you have protein shakes when you're bulking little meals like you know there ain't nothing wrong with 350 cows for a dude you know even if you're bulk you just got to eat more the gracie i just finished the hicks and gracie book which was great hicks and gracie's big thing they followed the gracie diet which again some it's controversial some people agree don't hori and gracie kind of taught me he's the founder of the ufc he's kind of i got a video somewhere about it and one thing he says that i think is interesting you know they have their whole diet mixing protocols but they said the same thing, which is don't eat too much. Let this, don't get the stomach all distended and let it go, you know, eat. I think they have the Gracie diets like two and a half to three hours minimum, maybe four. The key is it's the same with making money. You gotta have a modicum of self-discipline or routine. You know, everybody's very random in this world and they get random results. We want to make a little money. I want to be happier. We want to live to 102 maybe. It's not complex you know people are like in the modern world it's like what's quantum you know computing algorithmic 
answer to how I should live is like old school. Luigi was doing this in late 1400s, early 1500s. He was like, just like the Japanese, don't blow that stomach up. And America is so anti that. It's just like, <laughs> you look at American health. You're just like, if I travel around the world, come back to America. I was with some friends that had never been to Europe. They come back to America. Like, what is wrong with America? I'm like, probably portion size. Not, I mean, obviously caloric too, but just like per meal. America, I remember growing up, it's like you want that big feeling. Like, oh, you pat your stomach. Stay away from that. Keep that thing. If you want to eat a lot of calories, fine. Spread it out. Spread it out. Yeah, if you want to hear me talk about some more old school forgotten books, subscribe, like, but subscribe because I'm going to start dropping some like One of my cousins was like, you need to talk about these books nobody knows about. So. I think it's a free book. Like I said, it's Luigi. Uh, it's the uh, Coronado, Coronaro, sorry. The Art of Living Long. I stumbled upon it when I was reading about Thomas Edison. So see you at 102. Maybe you'll go now with all the modern stuff. It'd be 202. 302.